Good evening and welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Tonight, we look at how students are preparing for the upcoming basketball season and the latest surrounding Marquette soccer. We'll also be discussing the biggest storylines around the NFL. So get ready, Marquette Nation, because Golden Eagle Sports Report starts right now. from the Jeannie Hayes Virtual Studio at Marquette University. This is Golden Eagles Sports Report. Marquette gets the rebound, and the champions have gone down! Hello everyone, I'm Kaylee Starl. And I'm Amy Galaszewski. Student season tickets for Marquette's men men's basketball officially went on sale this past week. How exciting, Haley! It's so exciting. And after not allowing fans for almost all of last year, the Golden Eagles will be opening up this season with the Marquette faithful by their side. Tyler Peters has more. Remember this? These two Marquette students do. That, yes, I yeah. miss it dearly. After going through a season heavily impacted by COVID-19, things will feel more normal this time around for the Marquette men's basketball team and Marquette Nation alike. I'm looking forward to seeing the players and the experience. Uh, me, myself, I play basketball too, so I'm looking forward to seeing that like D1 atmosphere. The Golden Eagles open up their season November 9th against Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. The difference between now and then, you might ask? The fans. Looking forward to November 9th, our first game. Being in there with the Marquette students and fans is something I'm really excited about. Season tickets for students went on sale this past week with each day presenting a new group that was eligible to make a purchase. And to no surprise, many jumped at the opportunity to secure their own tickets. Yes, we all did. Ready at 10 a.m. <laughs> yes. okay. Experienced fans shared their advice for underclass students, many of whom will be attending a game for the first time. Oh, dude, be, be loud. loud, be proud. You know, if people are doing the thunder, you can't. Oh, clap, clap at the right time. Yeah, clap at the right <laughs> Don't like, don't say that's so lame because you're lame. If you... Yeah, dude, dress up, get into it. I mean, it's yeah, awesome. Really get so. into the spirit. Reporting from the Alumni Memorial Union, I'm Tyler Peters, Marquette Wire Sports. And we now want to actually welcome in Tyler Peters, who's live from Pfizer Forum to talk more about Marquette's upcoming season. Tyler? Well, it's been nearly two years since Marquette Nation has been able to experience a season of basketball that was normal. Students are more than ready to cheer on the Golden Eagles in person once again. And the last batch of tickets for students were sold yesterday at 10 a.m. and quickly sold out shortly after at 11.30. Now, Marquette has not made any official statement yet on whether fans will have to wear masks during games, but on the Pfizer Forum website, it does specifically state that fans who are vaccinated will not be required to wear a mask. However, it is worth pointing out that for those who don't have a vaccine, will, not, will have to wear a mask if they do not have one. Now, finally, Marquette Madness will be returning this Friday at 7 p.m. and more importantly will be airing right here on Marquette University TV. On top of that, the event will include the addition of introducing Marquette men's basketball and women's basketball along with t-shirt giveaways, performances from the dance team and the cheerleading team as well and a whole lot more. So if you're not doing anything and if you're not attending this event in person, be sure to tune in to MarquetteWire.org slash MUTV. Once again, that is MarquetteWire.org slash MUTV. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Tyler. Great stuff as always. And next time, Kaylee and I will be joining you down there at Pfizer. <laughs> and as Tyler just said, Marquette Madness will be airing right here on MUTV this Friday. You can watch a live stream on YouTube, MarquetteWire.org slash MUTV, or channel 4.1 on Campus Cable. And you won't want to miss out on the action, so be sure to tune in. And with Marquette basketball quickly approaching, student athletes are looking to take advantage of name, image, and likeness. The NCAA adopted a name, image, and likeness policy June 30th that immediately went into effect July 1st. 
Wisconsin is among 23 U.S. states that have not passed any NIL legislation. This marks the first time in the NCAA's 115-year history where players can earn profit off their performance or popularity. And with that, we now want to welcome in Executive Sports Editor John Liuzzi. John, you were on last week and you're back. What's up with that? I mean, it's great and it's a little cold in here. That's why I'm wearing the sweater, so I'm okay. ready to bring the heat. Oh, John. So. Okay, well, we're starting off pretty yeah. hot here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so first off, tell us a little bit about what N NIL is, what we mm -hmm. need to know. I know you wrote that story in the Marquette Tribune last week, but tell the audience who may not have read it yet. Yeah, so NIL really is name, image, and likeness, and this is passed by the NCAA uh, on July 1, and where student athletes throughout all three divisions, Division I, Division II, and Division Three, can make profit off their name, image, and likeness. And for 115 years, these student athletes weren't able to be typical college students. And wow. you know, uh, it's, it's a big step in, in the right direction. This has been coming for a while. But the biggest thing, Amy, is nothing passed through the National Congress. Mm. So that's really where the mix-ups have been. And there's still NCAA, a lot of misconceptions. There's still a lot of, yeah. Yeah. And in your article, you talked to some pretty important people on campus, including Marquette's head athletic director, yep. Bill Scholl. And so what stood out to you the most about that interview? The main thing for talking from Bill Scholl, along with the other people I talked for the article, was that Marquette was preparing for this legislation from the NCAA with all these policies that they were preparing for. And then on June 30th, the NCAA came out with two guidelines. And that was about it. So everything they were preparing for was thrown out the window and they had to prepare all over again. So those two guidelines is one, athletes cannot be paid to play. Mm -hmm. And secondly, this can't be used as a recruiting in inducement. So they can't really say, you come if you come to Marquette, you're gonna make all this money because you're playing for Marquette uh, athletics. That's just not how it's gonna be. So mm -hmm. they can't in get involved there. The big thing was they don't have state legislation as well. So they, they were expecting something to happen. It ended up not happening, but where they still have a good policy that's student friendly, uh, Danielle just said he's told me. Now there's like a lot of tricky rules in here. Do you even think that the athletes are educated enough on this topic? Personally, I don't think so. And I think that's one of the other things that Bill Scholl was talking about along with Danielle Gisetti and mm -hmm. Matt Mitten, a professor over at the Marquette Law School that I spoke with saying, they're trying to give all these resources to uh, these student athletes and bringing in companies who they're able to partner with to educate because for 18 to 22 year olds, this is a lot of new information. You have to worry about the tax ramifications as mm -hmm. well. They all thought they were gonna get, make money right after on July 1. There's some stuff they have to get before they can make that money. Well, John, we'll have to see what the future of NIL looks like. But as always, thanks for coming on. Really informative insights today. But when we come back, we'll be updating you on Marquette men's and women's soccer. So don't go anywhere because GSR will be right back. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat? And Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> Take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope.
welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Once again, I'm Amy Galaszewski. And I'm Kaylee Starrell. Now both the men's and women's soccer teams are in full swing as they officially started Big East Conference play last week. The women's soccer team finished non-conference action with a 4-3 record and had their conference opener last Thursday. Molly Gretzlock has more. Thursday night was the kickoff to Big East Conference play for the Marquette women's soccer team as they fell 1-0 to Butler. And while a pink sunset filled the sky over Valley Fields, the game was not filled with a lot of goals. Both teams came out aggressive and were hitting the ground fighting for the ball, which was head coach Frank Plyes' main focus headed into the pitch. We're going to keep shooting and shooting and shooting and following up till we get it right, and sometimes we do. So. The Golden Eagles held their own against the reigning Big East Midwest Division champs for almost the entirety of regulation. First year forward Maggie Starker highlighted on everyone doing their parts to make that happen. Everyone did their job, everyone made big tackles, everyone worked hard to make sure that the people behind them had an easier job too. But in the 90th minute, a free kick for the Bulldogs sealed the fate of the game. <laughs> Junior Aaliyah Dean found the back of the net handing Marquette their first conference loss. Marquette will travel to Villanova on September 26th, and Pelage is looking forward to the next game. Hey, when you have a game like this, the best thing to do is get on the plane and go play somebody else, especially from out east, because those guys over there, who knows? You don't know what you're going to get over there. <laughs> Reporting from Valley Fields, I'm Molly Gretzlock, Marquette Wire Sport. And now turning to the men's team, they started their season hot, ranked top 20 in the nation and winning their first three games. But things took a turn shortly after. Yes, following a four-game losing streak, the Golden Eagles broke out of their slump this past weekend, defeating Seton Hall 3-1. And first-year midfielder Edry Caceres found the back of the net in the 12th minute, setting the tone for the remainder of the match. This was Marquette's first win at Seton Hall since 2011 and its second in program history. And we would now like to bring in our very own Sam Arco. Sam, welcome back. How are you doing? Thanks, Kelly. It's great to be back. Good. So, I mean, starting off, what are even are the biggest takeaways for this team so far? Were they ranked too, too high early on in the season? I honestly don't think they were. You know, they started off 3-0, like we mentioned, and then mm -hmm. they had the tough stretch. They lost four in a row. But some of those games were really tough. They faced Tulsa on the road, only lost one to nothing, and they're ranked seventh in the country. They also lost to Northern Illinois on the road, who has both skin ranked. So, a couple tough losses, but it was a good competition. And, you know, they're back where they're at with a 3-1 win over Seton Hall. So, I think they're going to be back to where they're at. Yeah, and so speaking of competition, you know, with the Big East being such a challenging conference, who do you think is going to be their toughest opponent? Yeah, talking to Louis Bennett over the past couple of weeks, you know, he said Big East is one of the best conferences in the country, and it's roughly so. You know, they have Georgetown, who is ranked number one in the country, mm -hmm. so obviously that's going to be their biggest opponent. And they have a chance to take them down this year after not facing them last year, so they faced them on their last uh, regular season game here at Valley Field, so hopefully they, you know, show them a fight. And you'll be there covering everything for us, I sure right? hope so, yes. <laughs> And so after recently snapping their four-game losing skid, you know, what adjustments has head coach Louis Bennett made to help his team kind of get back in that winning column? Yeah, well, Kaylee, over that four-game stretch, they didn't score at all in any of those games. So yeah. that's over 400 minutes where they didn't score. And talking to Louis, he said, you know, we just got to go back to playing us, you know, how we play. And going back to last year when they played really well in the Big East, I think that's just what they had to do going here forward. And I think they're going right on the back track. And so, you know, talking to people that are on the right track, you know, first year midfielder Ed Trey Caceres is leading the team stats with goals and assists. You know, with him only being a first year student, what do you hope to see from him as the season goes on? Yeah, Caceres has been the bright spot for this team, yeah. undoubtedly, you know, especially as a first year in the midfield. I don't think as many people have thought of a breakout season like this would be happening, but I think he can take it even further as the season goes on, and uh, I'll be really excited to watch him. I think we all will be very excited to watch him too. <laughs> As always, Sam, we appreciate the time. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will be discussing all things NFL. So keep it here because you won't want to miss it. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi.
leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique after the first drown. A good start. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh. My bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. <sighs> Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? We are back here in Studio 7 as we talk about the start of the NFL season, the rookie quarterback class so far, and everyone's hot takes for the rest of the season. And so joining me tonight on the panel, we have Sam Arco, Ben Schultz, and Jackson Gross. This is my first time leading the panel, so I'm pretty excited. But I need the energy. Are you guys excited? Yeah, we're excited. We're definitely so far, excited. So. All right, let's get started. So every quarterback selected in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft has played at some point this season. However, the results have been pretty underwhelming. So what has surprised you the most with this rookie QB class so far? Ben, start us off. I think Trevor Lawrence has been very disappointing. He was supposed to be um, maybe one of the best quarterback talents that we've seen coming into the NBA, maybe since Andrew Luck. And he just hasn't wow. lived up to that expectation so far through three games. And so maybe he'll figure it out and maybe he won't. It's still pretty early, Ben. He has seven interceptions. Fair enough. Sam, what do you got? I'm going to go with Trey Lance, about him not playing. You know, watching the 49ers and Packers game, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, he looked terrible, honestly. And Trey Lance came in for one play, scored on that touchdown. I, I want to see him give him some more snaps as we go on throughout the season. I think Jimmy G's on the hot seat. Do you think he could look better than Jimmy G even this season? Oh, yeah. Wow. Sam, you're already bringing the hot take. It's only the first he played question. At North Dakota State, he threw 40 touchdowns, zero interceptions last year. I mean, I'm excited to see him bring it here now. But, Jackson, what do you think? Um, I mean, the most surprising, honestly, has been the fact that Mac Jones has been pretty w good. Um, part of that, he does have the talent. He's been in two really good situations, Alabama, now New England. So he's been really good. But overall, the lack of success in winning games. I mean, rookie quarterbacks, I think, are 1-10 in 10 or 1-7. in 7, And the only win is Mac Jones over Zach Wilson in the Jets. So... Uh, I wonder which QB is going to get a win against another non-rookie QB this year. All right, so you guys set all your takes now, but like, let's flash forward ahead to the end of the season here. Who do you think is going to stand out the most out of all the people you mentioned? Oh, man. Uh, it's tough because there's so many uncertainties with each guy. Um, I think just with the amount of talent, I think Trevor Lawrence is going to end up figuring it out, but if the Bears can turn some things around, I think Justin Fields might be a sneaky candidate for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Wow. What do you have to say to I that? Mean, <laughs> obviously, obviously Justin Fields is going to be the best one out of all of them. <laughs> Guys sleeping on I mean, he's in a tough spot. He has a really bad coach, which is help holding him back. But Jackson nailed it. He's the he'll, You wait a couple Big weeks. Big talk for the Bears, but their quarterback's being questionable right now. Big talk over here. You just wait a couple weeks. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, so for the first three weeks so far, the Chiefs looked a little off. The Rams look pretty legit. And Matthew Stafford is thriving with his new team. So tell me what your biggest takeaways are from these first few games. Yeah, I will uh, touch on the Rams. I mean, Matthew Stafford, I think that's a great fit for him out in L.A. I mean, poor guy had to be in Detroit for his whole career. we will never forget I mean, that. <laughs> I mean, if the Rams could take Jared Goff to the Super Bowl a couple years ago, I mean, what can they do with Matt Stafford this year? I think mm -hmm. the sky is the limit for them this year. 
Like MVP material? I could see MVP. I could also see Super Bowl. I, I mean, as I don't want to admit it, but they look pretty good. Oh, well, they play the Packers November 28th, so I I, hope, I hope I'm waiting for that one. Because if the Packers <laughs> can beat the men, then I think the Packers have a pretty Go good Rams. chance at Super Bowl. All right, keep saying that over there, but let's head over here. I think we have to pump the brakes a little bit on the Chiefs. Um, they've been to back-to-back Super Bowls. They just added Josh Gordon, who's going to give Mahomes another threat. Um, they have Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the NFL. And I think we just have to wait a little bit, see how the rest of their division play shakes out, and I think they'll, they'll turn it around. Yeah, I think, the, at least for me, the two biggest surprises have been uh, one from the NFC and one from the AFC. That being first from the NFC, Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers. Now, there is a caveat. They haven't played the greatest competition yet. They played the Jets week one, and they played Davis Mills and the Texans week three. But Sam Darnold just looks so much better, and he looks so much happier being away from Adam Gase and the Jets. So I'm really happy for him there. And then, speaking of the AFC West, Las Vegas Raiders, they've been fantastic. Henry Ruggs has, a, has been having a bounce back season. Max Crosby and Carl Nassif have been insane on the edges for that Raider defense. So they can keep this up. I think they have an outside shot of winning the division, especially with how slow the Chiefs have started. But that AFC West is loaded, especially with the Chargers. I'm not as big a fan of the Broncos, but those other three teams are special. You know, I'm pretty surprised that none of you really brought up that big Packer game on Sunday night where Aaron Rodgers made that clutch play, getting Mason Crosby to kick that in and get the Packers a win. So what do we feel about that? I mean, it's vintage Aaron Rodgers. It's I was, a classic. I was watching it, and when Juszczyk scored the touchdown, I mean, I know the Packers didn't have any timeouts, but, like, you left them too much time. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with Tom Brady. It's the same thing with any elite quarterback we've seen over there is Peyton Manning. You can't, the only good time to leave them anytime is you one second from the one yard line. You just, I mean, even then, Aaron Rodgers might throw a Hail Mary and win the game for us. So <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. I never know what he's capable of, but I kind of love it. <laughs> Sam, I feel like you are pretty quiet over here when we're talking about the Packers. Um, yeah, I mean, Rodgers, he's okay. I mean, I think he'd be better off hosting Jeopardy. Um, you, uh, he, you think he should just stay there? Yeah, his whole offseason stuff, he just. He wants all the attention. <laughs> all right, Sam. Well, those are some pretty lukewarm takes, guys. I'm not going to lie. So now we got to spice it up a little bit. We're three weeks in, so let's hear the hottest of your hot takes. So who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Who do you think is going to be the biggest disappointment this season? And my favorite question, do you think anyone's going to get fired before the end of the season? Jackson, start us off. I'll start a little vanilla with my take, but then things are going to get a little bit hotter. So be, be prepared. Um, my vanilla take... Super Bowl, at least making it, winning it, obviously, I don't know, but it's got to be the Rams. They are so, they're one of the few teams in the league that are so balanced on both sides of the ball. Matthew Stafford, as we talked about, has looked fantastic under Sean McVay. I mean, Sean McVay was running up and down the sidelines, high-fiving everyone. Might as well throw him at a helmet and get him on the field. But, and then on defense, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Leonard Floyd's still been solid. So, they got a real good shot at it, but my hot take now. Oof. Uh, Are first, we ready? Are we ready for the hot take? <laughs> uh, I think the first coach to be fired will make history in the fact that it'll be the first time this franchise has fired a head coach midseason. The head coach of my favorite team, the Chicago Bears. Matt Nagy has been a tire fire for the last three years. He's been lucky that the defense has been as good as it is and that they've been able to squeak into the playoffs uh, last year. That game plan against the Browns, I wanted to vomit. Wow, that's a really bold statement, Jackson. Like, <laughs> Please don't vomit. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, but it was, you put a mobile quarterback in a situation where you're going to drop him back like he's Tom Brady. I mean, Rex Ryan the next day was like, I wouldn't have done that with Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. So... It was an absolute disgrace to see. And you're having a 39-year-old Jason Peters go up against Miles Garrett, who had a Browns franchise single-game record in sacks. So, fingers crossed, Matt Nagy get fired, uh, Mike Pettin, interim coach, and then hire Dabble or Joe Brady next year. You know, I'm glad that you're admitting this because most Bear fans, they just like to talk up the Bears constantly, never admit the flaws. So, oh, It's been a unified front on Twitter. Everyone oh. wants Nagy going. 
So. All right, Ben, what are your thoughts? Um, so I'm going to start with my hot take. I think we're going to see Urban Meyer maybe not get fired, but I think he's going to leave and take the USC job out in California. So he's going to leave Jacksonville, leave the NFL, and go back to college. But then for the NFL and my Super Bowl pick, I think Matt LaFleur is going to get over the hump. He's going to yep. break out in his third season with the Packers out of the NCAA, NFC Championship and take he us to the glory to. And this could be Aaron Rodgers' last season with the Packers. So I feel like it's only fitting for the Packers to get a ring this year. Yeah, I agree. I think we drafted some great pieces. Eric Stokes has looked really good, especially with Kevin King not playing, mm -hmm. <laughs> thankfully. Um, <laughs> So I think, and then he grabbed, uh, we got Randall Cobb back from the Texans and then Amari Rogers from Clemson. So I think, I think he's got to be happy now. So Ben, you're talking about your Super Bowl picks here, but who are the disappointments? What coach do you think is getting fired here? Um, I don't hope Nagy is fired. I want him to stay around so that the Bears can keep being bad. Um, I wow. want them to waste <laughs> Justin Fields because he's, I think he's going to be really good. But if they waste him, that would make me very happy. But yeah. All right, Sam, let's turn over to you. Quiet over here in the All corner. Right. So I'm going to flip it around. So here's what's going to happen. The Bears are tanking on purpose right now. So <laughs> Nagy gets fired during the season. What? And then, you know, after Nagy's gone, then the Bears are going to start flourishing, probably win out the rest of the year, and then beat the Packers in the NFC Championship, and then make it the Where Super Bowl. Where is this coming from? And then we'll probably beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So. <laughs> Okay. Boom, how about a hot take? <laughs> um, that was The uh, ground is on fire right now from that take. That was a little bit too hot for me, but you know, I'm surprised that none of you brought up the Cowboys yet. The coach Cowgirls. That, the cow oh, sure. Oh. Um, the <laughs> coach that I think is gonna get fired is definitely Mike McCarthy. I still have a pretty bad taste in my mouth from when he was with the Packers, but did you see last night? Does he not know how to look at the clock and use a timeout? Even the ref was kind of like nudging him like, hey, you should probably use a timeout here. And Peyton Manning called him out. And I don't know, I just, I think if the Cowboys don't even make the playoffs this year, they're not gonna keep him much longer. He, I think he's a goner. It's, it's hard not to keep him, especially with how outside of Dallas and Washington, how bad the NFC East is. I mean, the Eagles look really good against the Falcons then get dominated against the Niners, and then get dominated against the Cowboys. The Giants are the Giants. So, um, yeah, they're going to have to win that division to keep, for him to keep his job. I think he'll keep his job through the season if they go 8-9, and 9-8, nine, nine and eight, but he may get fired at the end of the year. I, I got to agree with that. Yeah? If they don't win that division, I mean, he's got to be gone. Sad. That, that division, <laughs> sorry. I mean, John Leuzzi, I mean, got to be an Eagles fan. Like, that poor guy. <laughs> I mean, the whole division. Yeah. Well, looking ahead to this week, are there any matches that you're looking at? Well, Packers-Steelers, that's going to be exciting. Um, I think we'll be able to get it done, especially because Ben Roethlisberger looks not very good. And, I mean, Najee Harris has been a bright spot for them. They have some good receivers. Um, TJ Watt, a Wisconsin native. Yes. I don't think he's playing. Um, so that will definitely help Aaron Rodgers have some more time in the pocket, definitely help us uh, with the game. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. We are unfortunately out of time, but I love having discussions with you about the NFL. We'll have to do it again soon, but be sure to tune in next week for all of our coverage of Marquette sports and more. For Kaylee Starrell, I'm Amy Galaszewski. Good night, Marquette.